In late 2016, Apache Spark released a separate new graph processing library called GraphRames, which runs on top of Spark Core APIs. Why do we need GraphRames when there is already Spark GraphX and other graph databases like Neo4j and TigerGraph that is in the market, which has very good integration capabilities with Spark? So what Spark is really offering in the name of GraphRames and what is the advantage and other optimizations it brings onto the table? So let's break down now. Hey guys, this is Jay Prakash. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's get on to the video now. this is an hands-on video so you should have your environment ready to implement it on your own you don't need some high-end servers all you need is a simple uh, laptop uh, windows laptop with even four gigs of ram is sufficient you don't need to install any kind of vm so you have to just install spark on top on top of your windows so i'll be providing the link for installation guidelines in the comment section of this video so so please check it out and pretty important stuff is I did install Spark 2.4 in my Windows laptop and I recommend you to install any version that is very latest and I do see there is no support for GraphRames till Spark 2.1. Let's see the primary difference between GraphX and GraphRames. First and foremost, GraphX only work with Scala. So if you want to use GraphX with Python, you are out of luck. And uh, GraphRames, it works with currently on Java, Scala, and Python API. So if you are a good Java and Python developer, you have access to GraphRames. Second limitation is that it works only on the RGD. So it is a pretty older API and uh, it does not get the benefit out of recent API called DataFrames. But with, but with GraphRames, it works with DataFrames. That's a huge advantage. And coming back to graphics, it has support only for algorithms, but on graph frames, it supports algorithms, it supports queries, and there is something called motive finding, which we will revisit later. When we talk about a new framework introduced in the market, we need to talk about what kind of use cases this framework can address. Graph processing is important aspect of analysis that applies to a lot of use cases. Fundamentally, Graph theory and processing are about defining relationship between different nodes and edges. Okay, nodes are the units while edges define the relationship between the nodes. If you want to compare the nodes and edges from your graph systems with an RDBMS system, a node can be intercepted as an entity. So Bob is a node, Alice is a node, and Fanny is a node, Esther is a node, David, each and everything is a node. And edges define the relationship between the nodes. So Alice and Bob are related. Bob and Fanny are related. Charlie and Fanny are related. So this is how you define the node and relationship inside a graph network. So this works great for social network analysis and running algorithms like PageRank to better understand and weigh the relationships. One business case could be to look at a central people in a social network and other could be to find the most influential person in a network of people. So I do have a setup of a use case uh, to uh, with some very limited number of records. But in real time, you can see huge number of data. See, if you see this graph, and each one is a network and each of the network is again interconnected with some other networks. So this is how you could see in a real time environment, but I cannot use such a huge amount of data in my laptop and it may crash my Spark uh, environment. So I did, you know, have some very limited data so that uh, this is what I do have for now. Let's get our hands dirty for a quick hands on and uh, you need to invoke the Spark shell in Scala mode. Uh, I do have this exercise only for the Scala API and if you want you can execute the same with Python API if you are really comfortable with Python. And you have to invoke the graph frames package which is this is the latest graph frame package. So without this package all your syntax is going to fail. So please be aware of using a package when you invoke it. 
uh, I do have all the setup already done so I do invoke a command prompt and I did all the environment setup and I invoke my spark shell with the with my graph frames package and it automatically downloads the necessary packages uh, and uh, jars required for executing the graph frame operations please be uh, you know patient with with me because uh, this is a single node uh, instance installed in my personal laptop which has pretty less resources so if you could see i do have the setup like uh, spark context is available and uh, master is local it is a single instance and uh, spark version is 2.4 and i do have the scala version 2.11.12 and java 1.8.65 1 uh, so i do recommend uh, to use a similar setup or uh, kind of a better uh, versions after version 2.4 in order to make sure whatever the examples I do in this exercise works for you so let's do the initial formalities import the libraries required for creating the in instantiating spark and uh, SQL context for creating a data frame so I'm creating a vertex so vertex is nothing but a uh, node and I do have an ID name and age so this is just a plain vanilla data frame I do create using my SQL context or create data frame and there is a list so if you are really familiar with data frame this is a piece of cake to you you'll just go and refer to the data frame uh, APIs in the spark documentation so let's display this data frame Hmm. yeah it has three columns ID name and age so yep a simple plain vanilla data frame with uh, actually three columns called as ID name and age so let's create a relationship how does a relationship look which is called as an age in graph terminology that's nothing but another data set or a data frame let's display that so you have a source ID and destination ID and it has a relationship if you could see both the data frames we created node A and node B so this has information about uh, ID name and age and the second data frame is is saying how each of the guys um, related to so Typically, conventionally, if you want to do some analytics on these two databases, right, what you will do, you will do some joins, right? So, we all know that joins are really, really costlier. So, if you want to apply a, this is going to be a very, very small data set, but in real time, you may have billions of records uh, in, in one of your data set, and the other data set may be having n times of the billions of your nodes as your relationships so if you join billions of records with another billions of records it's going to mess up for each and every qu every query you are going to end up in crashing the system so this is where spark graph frames boost up the performance in any graph technology right the relationships are being stored as a primary citizen so you don't need to apply a join at runtime it means that if you create the graph frame automatically the relationships are being established so let's go and create a graph frame over here so the next step the key is we create a graph frame and rest all it's going to be really fast so we have created a graph frame called g and uh, let's display the vertices of g so even before that this has been the syntax of a graph frame vertices and index so let's display the vertices it's gonna get the content of v and display it for you that's what we expect yes let's display the edges from your graph frame you got it so automatically the system comes to know that you have a vertex and there is an edge and uh, graph frame has a better way of 
you know storing and uh, setting up this kind of uh, uh, efficient way of identifying this this is my vertex and this is an edge so you don't need to apply some kind of a join operation to do a real time analytics so let's see what is an in degree in degree and out degree says that how a node is um, related to the other node for example let me show with an example so in degree dot show so for each of the node how many number of uh, adjacent nodes it has for example a it has only one adjacent node so a from the source and in the destination it has only a uh, only one a in the destination but b if you see there are two nodes in the destination and take c c is also two and the reverse is your out degree dot show so these are all the other abstracts present in your graph frames as an api exposed so that you don't need to write any kind of uh, code something like reinvent reinventing from scratch you you actually don't need that out degrees is just an opposite to in degree so a is 2 so let's take uh, destination as your uh, reference so how many a's you have in the source you have two so that's what in degrees and out degree function with an example so let's run some query even without joining anything let's display the count of young i mean the age of the youngest person in the graph so this is the query for that so you get the result in an instant let's get the number of edges with relationship as follow so how many guys i mean uh, how many number of records is having the relationship as as follow we are getting a count since count is an action it displays the value if you want to just get the values i mean all the records if you do a show instead of that you get the records who follows whom the other important thing about the graph technology is, uh, is about motive finding motive is nothing but a network if you want to understand how each of a guy is related to the other guy and uh, if you in, in a network how a is related to b and how b is related to c so that is what your motive you can create your own motives and uh, analyze how each element is related to the other element or across all the elements how your element is being uh, having an impact so let's create a motive so this motive is nothing but uh, node a related to node b and also the node b should be having a relationship to node a so that's what this motive is so find all the records where a is related to b and also b is related to a so let's display that and see so these two records node a is bob and the relationship he follows c charlie and the relationship is follow and again c charlie follows bob so this is a way in a cool way with very limited number of uh, code we can find a relationship across a network called motives so if you want to do it in a conventional way of using a join this is going to be really really expensive that too with billions of records you will bring your spark down in a cluster and your admin will gonna, gonna go crazy so the other example which i want to explain is in a network where a is related to b and b is related to c so i just changed with uh, uh, from the previous query a is replaced as c so let's see how this guy is gonna behave so this is it so we have additional node c is added a b and c and both these two relationships Alice is a friend of Bob and Bob follows Charlie. Wow. Again, Bob follows Charlie 
and Charlie follow Bob and Charlie follow Bob and Bob follow Charlie and Fanny follow Charlie and Charlie follow Bob so it means that display everything where each guy is, is being having the relationship and uh, you can create your own motifs by referring the graph frames documentation and you can still apply some transformations and this is this is a core api transformation so rdd transformation i'm just applying a filter of it you can combine your uh, spark uh, rdd apis on top of your graph frames is an added advantage you can do in infinite number of analytics so let's do a filter and see so you 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 got it filtered so get the records that is having ages greater than 30 so with this i'm gonna end this exercise and let's continue on the next video about other very important topics of uh, spark graph frames and so you know what to do if you like or unlike the video comment uh, subscribe click the bell icon so that you get all the notifications on time please comment with all the queries so that that will really motivate me to do much better videos so please stay tuned for the next videos thank you so much see you soon